Hi, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about sunfish. I have this book here, the hunting from the Hunting and Fishing Library. It's called Freshwater Game Fish of North America. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about sunfish today. This book has game fish of all kinds, but I'm going to be focusing on the sunfish because I'm most familiar with them. Here we are, sunfish. And the first fish here we have is the largemouth bass. The largemouth bass is a fish that I've caught before. Um, their common names are also black bass, green bass, big mouth, and line size. And they are a light greenish to brown sides with a dark lateral band that may come and go. The jaw extends well beyond the rear of the eye. So here, jaw extends behind the rear of the eye. Um, unlike spotted bass, there's no patch of teeth on the tongue. As far as subspecies go, two are recognized, the northern largemouth and the Florida largemouth. The two look much the same, but the Florida largemouth has slightly smaller scales in relation to the size of its body. It has 69 to 73 scales along the lateral line compared to 59 to 65 on the northern largemouth. Originally, Florida largemouth were found only in peninsular Florida, but they have been stocked in several other states, including Texas and California. So let's see, let's go on to the next one. Next, we have the red-eye bass. Um, and common names are Coosa bass, Shoal bass, Flint River mouth, uh, Flint River smallmouth. So the eyes are red and the sides are brownish to green, usually with vertical bars. There's a prominent dark spot on the gill cover here. Um, the jaw tinge, oh, sorry, <laughs> I read the wrong line. The jaw extends to the rear position of the eye, so here's the jaw and it goes to the rear of the eye. Red eyes do not have the lateral bands and they resemble small mouth more than large mouth. So, although the taxonomy of the red eye bass group is uncertain, there are two widely recognized Forms the apple apple form or shoal bass and the Alabama form. So here is the Alabama red eye, and then here is the one I can't pronounce red eye. <laughs> Smallmouth bass. So here it shows a northern smallmouth, and then here it's showing a Neosha, Neosho smallmouth. Common names, bronzeback, brown bass, black bass, Oswego bass, green trout, and red eye. Greenish to brownish sides with dark vertical bars that come and go. These dark bars radiate from the eye. Smallmouth have a chameleon-like ability to change colors. See subspecies descriptions. So then here, their subspecies, two are recognized. The northern smallmouth bass, which is this one, and the Neosho smallmouth bass right here. The latter is now rare because much of its native habitat is inundated after dam con dams were constructed, so this one's pretty rare now, unfortunately. So 
says also that they are known to hybridize with the spotted bat. Flyer. Sometimes called brown sunfish because of its plate-like shape. Description. Greenish to yellowish sides with a dark spot on each scale. There is usually a dusty, dusky streak extending below the eye. It's right here. The dorsal fin has at least 11 spines, more than that of many other sunfish. Juveniles usually have a prominent black spot fringed in red at the rear of the dorsal. So it's right here. Um, but the spot disappears as the fish mature. It is known to hybridize also with white crappie. And here is the black crappie. Common names are paper mouth because they have very fragile paper-like mouths. So you have to be really careful when you're handing them, handling them. Um, I've actually caught crappies before, black, both black crappie and white crappie, and they're beautiful fish. Um, they're also known as speckled perch, bachelor perch, calico bass, and strawberry bass. Description. Silvery sides with a greenish to yellowish cast and scattered dark specks. The dorsal fin has seven or eight spines. Black crappie are deeper bodied than white and have a less noticeable depression in the profile above the eye. And they are known to hybridize with white crappie. Now here's the white crappie. They're really beautiful fish. Common names, paper mouth, speckled perch, bachelor perch, and silver bass. Description. Silvery sides with emerald and purple reflections and seven to nine vertical bars. The dorsal fin usually has five or six spines. White crappies are more elongated than black crappies and have a sharper depression in the profile just above the eye. So right here, there's a little bit more of a angle. And they are known to hybridize with black crappies and flyers. Next, we have the warmouth. And I have also caught a warmouth before. They're also known as stump knockers, goggle eye, and goggle eye perch. A description. Resembles the rock bass because of its reddish eyes and olive green sides with brown modeling. But the anal fin has only three spines compared with six on the rock bass. And there are several brownish streaks radiating from the eye. And they are known to hybrid, uh, hybridize with bluegill, pumpkin seed, green sunfish, red breast sunfish, and rock bass. So then next we have rock bass. And I have caught a rock bass before as well. Their other names are goggle eye, red eye, and rock sunfish. They are light brownish or greenish sides with brassy reflections and horizontal rows of dark spots. The eye is reddish and the anal fin has six spines. Rock bass are adept at changing their color to blend in with their surroundings. Subspecies. Currently no subspecies are recognized. At one time the deeper body shallow bass was considered a subspecies of the rock bass. And they are known to the hybrids between rock bass and shadow bass have been found in some parts of the south. Rock bass also hybridize with the warmouth and bluegill. So then we have a Sacramento perch. Um, 
they are light brown sides with greenish to purplish reflections, six or seven irregular dark bars along the side, and a dark spot on the gill cover below. Right there, and we have those bars. Bluegill. I've caught many a bluegill and I enjoy catching bluegill. They're very cute fish. Common names, sun perch, bream, blue sunfish, copper belly, and roach. The gill cover has a powder blue fringe and the gill cover lobe is entirely black. So it has the blue and then it has the black lobe right there. The sides have about five dark vertical bars that may be vague. The rear base of the dorsal fin has a dark blotch. So the pectoral fin is long and sharply pointed. See subspecies descriptions. So then we have some subspecies. Two are recognized. The northern bluegill, found throughout the bluegill range except peninsular Florida, and the Florida bluegill, found in Florida except in the panhandle. So here's the Florida bluegill here, and here's the northern bluegill here. Hybrids hybridizes with red ear, long ear, red breast, and green sunfish, and with pumpkin seed, wormouth, and rock bass. And then here it shows a northern bluegill spawning male. Pumpkin seed. I love these, they're so cute. Common names, common sunfish, yellow sunfish, and bream. Gold sides with seven to 10 faint vertical bars, which tend to be more prominent on females. The sides often have blue and emerald reflections and green, orange, and red flecks. The cheeks have a wavy blue streak, have wavy blue streaks, and the gill cover lobe has an orange or red spot at the tip. Their faces look like beautiful lightning. Commonly hybridizes with bluegill, less commonly with red breast, red ear, green, and long ear sunfish, and with warm mouth. We have the red ear sunfish. You can see that it's got the little red right here. Common names. Widely known as a shell cracker because of its fondness for snails. Also called stump knocker, bream, and yellow bream. The sides are light olive green to gold with red or orange flecks. The black gill cover lobe has a bright orange or red margin. Red ears resemble pumpkin seeds but are less colorful and lack the bluish streaks on the cheeks. Red and females, males and females are similar in appearance. Known to hybridize with bluegill, pumpkin seed, long ear, and green sunfish. Then we have the green sunfish. They're also known as green perch, blue spotted sunfish, rubber tail, and bream. They're dark olive on the back, lighter olive on the sides with iridescent green or blue flecks. Cheeks have iridescent green and blue streaks. The gill cover lobe has a light rear margin. The sides often have seven to 12 faint dark vertical bars. The mouth is large and the body is more elongated than that of other true sunfish. Both sexes are similar in appearance. 
They also hybridize with bluegill, pumpkin seed, warm mouth, red ear, red breast, and long ear sunfish. Next is the long ear sunfish, which I have caught before. They're really gorgeous and adorable fish. Um, so they're also known as red belly bream, red perch, black ear, and bream. The sides are mottled with orange and iridescent turquoise. The cheeks have iridescent turquoise streaks. The long black gill covered lobe accounts for its name long ear. The lobe has a light colored margin. So it's that. It's a nice long lobe on this one. That's how you can tell them apart from certain other ones. Subspecies. Two are recognized. The central long ear has a very long gill cover lobe that is almost horizontal. The margin of the lobe sometimes has several small reddish spots. This subspecies re reaches a maximum size of about 9 inches. Central long ears are the predominant subspecies and are found throughout most of the long ear sunfish range. So this is the central long ear pictured here. And then the northern long ear has a shorter gill cover lobe that extends upward at a 45 degree angle. The margin of the lobe often has a small red or orange spot. This subspecies grows to a maximum size of about 5 inches. Northern long ears are found in the southern Great Lakes and connecting waters. And here is the northern long ear. They do also hybridize with red ear, green sunfish, bluegill, and pumpkin seed. And the last sunfish that we have here is the red breast sunfish. And obviously it gets its name from the red on its belly. Um, they're also called yellow belly sunfish, robin, red belly, and bream. The black gill covered lobe of a red sunfish is as long as that of the central long ear sunfish, but there's no light colored margin. Males have a reddish breast, olive upper sides, and blue streaks on the cheeks. Females are le often less colorful. Their breasts are yellow or pale red. I think I might have caught one of these before too. I'm pretty sure I have. Um, they're also known to hybridize with warm mouth, bluegill, pumpkin seed, and green sunfish. So I hope that you have enjoyed learning about these fish. Um, go ahead and check out the link in the description if you're interested in um, this book. I'm going to try to link to it on Amazon and I also have web my web personal website information as well if you're interested in that. If you are interested in seeing future videos also, please feel free to subscribe and I'll see y'all soon.